Get your air balls ready. Welcome to the Greg and Tim Show podcast. Take time to sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Here are your hosts, Greg and Tim. Well, welcome to the Greg and the Tim Show. Why, I am why Tim, Tim, and this is my buddy Greg. We are the show where it's okay to not be okay, uh, except when you're editing. Then you have to be <laughs> dang near perfect. We're Especially gonna, when I'm editing you. Yeah. It, and I'm not just close to perfect, but exactly perfect. Uh, Bang gonna, on. You know what? We're going to talk about a lot of interesting things. And we haven't talked in a long time. We've been doing so many interviews yeah. that it's like, I forget what you look like. I know you need a haircut, but I just, I could, <laughs> other than that, I, I just can't remember what, <laughs> what you look like just across <laughs> from me because you're always beside me. You, well, and you never look at me. You're always <laughs> staring at the guests. Gazingly. Uh, but there's a bird. Adam Big Hill was uh, here. And he yeah. just stared into his eyes the whole time. <laughs> they were dreamy. Uh, so we're going to talk about hockey. Unfortunately, the Jets lost yesterday. Sorry, we're Dan, talk- Dan Chenier also got his eyes stared into, right? I, t- I, sh- I stare into everybody's eyes. Everybody's, everybody's eyes. Everybody's eyes. Wow. And you know what? We're going to talk today about uh, Greg, and he found another pain in his neck that wasn't me. That's, well, I that's, have an actual that's, pain in my that's neck. That's recent. I've been going to the chiropractor. That's correct. <laughs> and that was my first question question about how you're doing yeah, i'm doing good i have a pain in my neck and it's not you so you're I, correct <laughs> I have, so i haven't talked to you for four days and you said um you I, during the last interview that we did yeah. you just wouldn't look at me and i said why didn't you look at me i was trying to give you signals and stuff and you're like i couldn't i couldn't move my neck well i was looking at you but i was looking at you like this <laughs> but now I can move it. Thanks to Dr. Dan, I am moving perfectly good. Still yeah. some pain, but yeah. it's going away. I got an appointment again tomorrow, which uh, we're recording today on a Wednesday evening. Um, and, yeah. and what? And, and did we talk about why you have this pain in the neck? Well, we didn't because we haven't really talked since we got back from Florida, I don't think. Have we? Uh, I don't think so, no. I don't think we have. Uh, well, we got into a minor fender bender. It wasn't our fault. We got rammed from behind. That's yes, correct. Continue. <laughs> That's pretty much the story. Okay. Well, if you want to hear the whole story, we yeah. got hit from behind. We stopped. We pulled over. We asked the guy for his information. He had none on him. We proceeded to call the police so that they could get the information to provide to us for our insurance company. The police showed up and continued to get very upset with Tim, not Tim, <laughs> I wasn't with there. Steve, <laughs> that you weren't there. You were in a hot tub. We were calling you to see if you could pick up the other guys. Nobody would answer. Steve then continued to talk back to the cop. Steve got arrested. He was there overnight. Don't tell anybody else this because nobody else knows about his arrest. In yeah. Florida. And as you know... One truth to lie, Greg is at it again. <laughs> Obviously, Steve did not Steve get arrested. Did not get arrested nor did but, but the cop wasn't happy with us being yeah. pulled over where we were. We had to pull over to another area, just like in Super Troopers. What's that? <laughs> we're pulled over. We can't pull over any further. Pull over. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm already pulled over. I'm already pulled over. Pull over farther, man. I can't pull over. Sir, I'm already pulled over. He's already pulled over. He can't pull over any farther. In Canada, you you do the you, you stay you there. Stay in the spot all the, the information accident. is, and then in the U.S. is like, why are you still here? Get out of our area. Get, get out and exchange it at some other place. Drive into that private parking lot where they probably don't want you parked. Yeah, Krispy and Kreme. Get some free donuts there. and then exchange <laughs> exactly. the information. Right, Krispy Kreme. That was fantastic. Actually, <laughs> Krispy Kremes. Um, uh, how's yeah, it, how so it, my neck is getting better, and thank you for asking. How's your neck? My neck is fantastic. How's your back? My back is fantastic. My heel. So this is also from Florida. Um, apparently, the shoes that I was wearing to walk around were oh. didn't have the proper support. Hmm. And so it felt fine. Then all of a sudden, I got back and and uh, like a week and a half later, all of a sudden, I developed some plantar fasciitis, which I've never, I, I didn't even know how to spell that. I still don't. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know what it was, but it, it, it developed in my heel. I thought started. only gardeners got that. No, um, all of a sudden my heel just started like in uh, when I went to Minneapolis last weekend for a couple of days. Yep. I'm walking around and my and my my heels in crazy pain, like really hurts. Like I've yep. never had that kind of pain. Even driving on the way back is really hurting. And apparently it's because yeah, no support in those shoes, and huh. I had to get some insoles and put some uh, and. Uh, put some uh, better shoes on, and I got to throw those out. I guess those seven dollar Target specials, I guess, didn't really do oh, the trick. It was those ones, yeah, the white ones. Yeah, that's right. Those Thanks your, a lot for telling me to get those I heel told you to get those. hurting <laughs> shoes, Greg. 
Plantar fasciitis. Fasci- I thought it was fasci- only for people that itis. planted things. Uh, do you ever, like, talk, talking about your neck yeah. and my heels, do you ever get, like, um, you feel really, really good and you feel young and exuberant, then all of a sudden you get something, like, you're like, am I, am I going to start feeling these more and more and get old? I feel them every day. <laughs> I don't feel them more and more. I literally feel them every day. Because most times I feel great, and then sometimes you're like, my back is, I was like, I feel like I'm, today I'm like 74 or whatever, yeah. right? Well, sometimes I wake up and I walk to the walk to the bathroom in the morning, and I'm I'm like keeled over while I'm walking, like an old like you know like the like a cartoon character, yeah, you know like an old like the old man in The Simpsons. Who's laughing now? It <laughs> shut up. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So sometimes I feel like that guy, and then after like an hour, maybe a day. <laughs> I start feeling better and I'm all good. I think it might be my posture too. So I, I should probably try to work on myself. Um, when we do our interviews, I try to work on our posture by having pillows behind us. And yeah. that's just the, you just put them on the side of you. If you watch last up. week's episode. <laughs> Crunched uh, up. With Jasmine. I, 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 I was <laughs> just like, shove it in behind me right there. I, I, I always go in the premise that 90% of the people don't actually watch us. <laughs> they just listen. <laughs> they just listen. Uh, so sense. I'll show up in my marathon I don't know shirt. why I have three cameras set up then. <laughs> <laughs> because you know five people recognize will say what was he wearing most times will be like what the heck did he say that guy's an idiot there was one in one episode where you're wearing a black shirt that just has like dog hair all over it and i'm like i can't edit that <laughs> you should put more dog hair you should go the other way on I should it. just put like a dog just on like your shirt. every minute have a different dog <laughs> on the shirt and see who notices oh man we're getting uh, so far off but, track no but um so my week's been really good. We went to Minneapolis. I didn't ask. My, we, went to, we went to Minneapolis last weekend. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I went to go see the yeah. T Wolves and did uh, you last week Phoenix. or was that two weeks ago? Uh, well, it wasn't this. Uh, so today we're filming on Wednesday. It wasn't this last week. It was the weekend before that. Yeah, it's hard to keep track of the, the weekends. It's been because, a week and a half since you were there. But we've done so many weekends since we recorded last. Yeah, we don't record this style as yeah. much anymore. Which leads me to ask the first question to yeah. the viewer. Yeah, what what do you like better? Right. Tim talking to Greg like a fun guy or like Tim talking guy. to that somebody he doesn't know like a fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently we talk too much sports. Uh, but that's according to one. One guest one so person. far. Yeah. But that's okay. 85% of our viewers Because are, you know uh, why that's okay. Because we just chapter everything yeah, below. Right. And, they and then you can skip through. to the Taylor Swift segment that's yeah. later on in the episode. Yeah. Taylor Swift coming up. Yep. A lot of controversy. <laughs> What's better than two... Middle aged, middle aged, mid forty year old men talking yeah. about Taylor but Swift's ha- new have album. Have no fear, I have an expert uh, teenage uh, response to the album, uh, so you do not have to go and on our in expert. I am also not an expert word, on not albums. a word. In expert is certainly not a word. Uh, a two middle aged guys reviewing the Taylor Later Swift in the new episode. Album. If you're skipping forward to it, I understand. We do have a lot of other things to talk about. If you if you want to. Skip forward to it now. Yeah. Listen to that and then come back to this part. This is the like nine, like 10 minute mark of the episode. So yeah, just go back, come back, come back to us. Come How... back and like and subscribe and comment about everything. Yeah. Let's not go on to hockey yet. No. Uh, no. Let's talk about. I the... wanted to Our... talk about something else. Well, you want to talk about something else? Yeah. What do, you, what do you want to talk about? I have Eden's birthday this week. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I will uh, shelf my. Oh, you have uh, something no, else to talk no, about. I will. I will shelf it. No, don't shelf it for we'll, a later we'll time in the episode. In a, in no, you go. Go ahead. So you're doing your daughter's birthday party on Eden, your wife's birthday. Eden's birthday is on my wife's birthday. <laughs> I didn't plan it. My wife did, so I don't. I don't have to feel anything about this. Um, I have to show up. Yeah. I have to be ready <laughs> yeah. to party with a bunch of eight-year-olds right or seven-year-olds and eight-year-olds yeah and uh we're doing the same thing we did last year which is like a pool party at a hotel the kids are gonna have a blast we're gonna have cake we're gonna have pizza what's the theme bucky's which it was last year as well which it right? was last year same hotel Eden, same theme she loves it she loves her bucky's Be- so because the of reason course, why we're doing the hotel yeah. is because she's turning eight yeah 
and people can <laughs> judge this as much as they want to. Yeah. We're going to a Super yeah, 8. Yeah, and you went to the Motel 6 on her sixth birthday. No, so I didn't. Mean- <laughs> <laughs> but the Super 8 we're going to is a nice one. It's clean. It's fun. Uh, and uh, the kids really just want to go swimming and have some pizza, really. <laughs> yeah. They're not they're not hard to please. But Eden wants a Bucky's birthday, so it'll yeah. be red and yellow again. We got uh, Bucky's and stuff. If, and, if, and, if nobody, and if nobody knows about Bucky's again we'll just reiterate this if people don't yep. know you guys went to Texas last year Bucky's is this massive yeah. uh, gas station slash Walmart the world's largest gas sla- station and, and if you've never been there it's not like if you can imagine oh it's just a big gas station why would I want to go there it's not a big gas station it's like a gas station on Barry Bond steroids times 100 yeah and uh, they sell everything. Like it's like a deli. It's like a retail store. It's like illegal <laughs> drugs in the back. No. Um, but no, no drugs. It's the the world's biggest bathrooms. The bathrooms alone. No, not world's biggest. World's cleanest. World's cleanest. Yeah. World's cleanest I'm sure it's bathrooms. The, I'm sure, it might be the biggest too. But you you went to the uh, the one in Texas that was a large. I one. went to a whole bunch. Yeah. I went to eight, I think, in total yeah. in Texas. So the kids, different the, ones. The kids loved it so much that Eden demanded for the next two birthdays. And she, she has a Bucky's costume that yeah. she loves and we were just at bucky's uh in florida we so drove we, we took the guys yes all the who way had never been who had never been to daytona beach we were the only two people that had not been, <laughs> so that had been. we are the only two people that will take six other guys yeah. from tampa bay yeah. through orlando stopping at krispy Kreme to get a couple of free donuts twice twice <laughs> and then go all the way to daytona beach yeah and not actually go to the beach yeah, well, it, we never had time. Steve thought we had time. There was like, but still, we there, drove all the way to Daytona there was Beach. A, nobody saw the beach. Nobody no. saw the racetrack. Yeah. we went to Bucky's. Yeah, that was all we went for, and, and it, it was fine. Bucky's it, is a fun place. It was, I, it, I like it. I got a dog toy there. Yeah. I got some outfits for the kids there because yeah. they really love it. I got Taylor her birthday present, which yeah. is a big uh, Bucky's. Bucky's. It's a whole suit. If you've never seen it, maybe he can show. Maybe one. I'll wear it on one of the episodes. Maybe, maybe you'll show uh, one of uh, Eden's, and then maybe one of Taylor's too. We have a couple of pictures for uh, during the episode. Um, <laughs> maybe you can throw those up just so maybe, people can see. Just maybe I could. Yeah. Yeah, you'll do it. We'll see. We'll do that. But um, maybe I'll wear mine on one of the episodes. Hey, well, I can wear. We I can both too. wear it. Yeah. We can make it an all Bucky's all the yeah. time episode. It'll be hilarious for three and a half minutes. Yeah. That's how long the episode will be. <laughs> yeah. And cut. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. So that's going to be, that's yeah. Friday. Sorry, you shelved a topic. Though. No, what's no, your, that, sho- what's your I, shelved? I'm just trying to think if we're done talking about that topic because it is exciting. It's, it's, it's awesome. Your, your kids growing fun. up. Yeah. And uh, it's, again, it's also your wife's birthday, which you have, you're not, what's your plans for your wife's birthday? Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, Tim, let me be frank with you because at least Frank could get away with this. Greg is dropping the ball these days. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm so, sure. I'm sure we'll see. <laughs> He got so quiet. <laughs> I've never seen that in one of the episodes. I've never seen that. We'll see. I've seen it for we'll me. I've yes, never seen a it for lot you. Of times for me. <laughs> um, and you are. Uh, <laughs> Go back to the Kirk Heelback episode if you haven't watched it. Yet. Tim's speechless uh, for the first time in his life. I will go. I will draw blanks more than Greg will. I admit it. And all of a sudden, I'll be like, have a strand like of blank spaces, and, and my brain will just go. Incomplete, incomplete file, incomplete file, incomplete file, incomplete file. <laughs> this spinny incomplete wheel file, again? Incomplete file. And I'm in the middle of talking and asking a question. I'm like, I'm, shoot, I have no idea what I'm talking about. What are the words coming out of my mouth? What am I supposed to say? And then, so it sounds you like. You know what I hear when you're doing that? <laughs> the dial tone from, uh, from dial up. <laughs> And then it, it fails and it comes up, <laughs> could not connect. <laughs> so that's exactly right. Uh, so it happens to be quite frequently, but Greg, I've never seen it until that exact moment. And usually when it happens, he goes, oh, okay, it's... we have to cut and start that again. <laughs> and never, okay, that was great. So uh, what I wanted to talk about was this, <laughs> was this fabulous moment every time in Manitoba, every year, come April, when the snow is gone and it starts to get nice and everything's hopeful and bright and brilliant and that's spring in Manitoba. And then it snows again. Uh, no, it's like, I think it's, I think it's going to be nice for the next little bit. Maybe well, yeah, May yeah. long, but it's gorgeous outside. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, I said it was beautiful yesterday and your response was? 
<laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I had been on sign. <laughs> I was just trying to be. <laughs> um, uh, no, actually, uh, I'm wearing my uh, marathon shirt from uh, running the marathon uh, that was uh, last, year. last year, right? Yeah. Uh, this is when we did the Are half. you doing it again? Uh, no, I think so. Uh, Raina's thinking about doing it. She's actually going to uh, Hal- Nova Scotia next year for school. So there's a there's a marathon uh, close to Halifax, yeah. uh, actually close to, closer to where she is at Acadia. So she's thinking about going there in October and doing it, but I have no plans this year. I'm wearing my Nike Run long sleeve top for yeah. when I uh, sit and work. Where you only sit and work. <laughs> yes. that's because I uh, run uh, you, very little now. Uh, yes. But I am thinking uh, of getting an assault bike. Okay. That Dr. Dan was talking about. Right. So we'll see. We'll right. see how that works out for me. Right. They're expensive. Well, yeah. If we say assault didn't, bike. Didn't we talk about Can't we say assault bike three times and it just show up? <laughs> Isn't that how these things <laughs> yes, work? it's like Beetlejuice. Uh, did we talk about this uh, where, um, what was it that we were saying about exercise stuff? And again, here's the spinny wheel going, right? Yeah. Spinny, spinny, spinny. Give a sound again. Um, oh, yeah. We were talking about on, on was it uh, Sunday night? Go on. When someone said that uh, being healthy is expensive. Oh, yeah. Was it, was, it, was it buying groceries or something like that, right? Being yeah. healthy is expensive. And I said being sick is. Not expensive. Is, yeah. It's, in Canada. You said that. It's not expensive. You can be, you can in be the, sick for very cheap in Canada. Yeah. Then you. In the United States, being yeah. sick is expensive, yeah. which is a hot topic. Right. You can you can actually afford to be sick in Canada, right? In the states, getting sick costs you a lot of money, right? Or you die, right? Unless you have, but because benefits. of our healthcare system, yeah. which is free, yeah, people throw caution to the wind. Yeah, it depends on how much you value life, life. per <laughs> dollar <laughs> dollar per limb or whatever, right? How much is your life worth, right? Yeah. So it depends on how you do cost. But yeah, anyway, so it's great outside. It's awesome. It's fantastic outside. We, I when, love it. When we were well, in, walking the dog, is so much more fun. Oh yeah, you would, you would, uh, we would stay at your place to like uh, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, and then you'd go walk the dog, and it was like minus five, and you go out there with the shorts and t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's because I'm climatized for it, right? Or just didn't want to put on proper clothing because you're a seven, <laughs> seventeen year old girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Like I, I don't get cold like anybody else. Right. Uh, I, I don't wear a winter jacket in the winter. Really. Yeah. Okay. It's just, I don't know. I, I do those cold showers. Right. I'm I'm very much okay with the cold. Right. Or as Bane would like to say, you merely adapted to the cold. I was born in it. You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it. Um. I, well, he says dark. I say cold. Because I grew up in Thompson, Manitoba, which was very cold up there. <laughs> Why are you lo- you're and trying dark. to think of something to say. And dark. <laughs> Again. And dark. It's yeah. dark there in the winter. For sure it's dark there in the winter. But <sighs> anyway. Um, this, is the part, this is the part of the episode that everybody's wives love. Yeah. And in, in fairness. Should we have an intro to In this fairness, part? only one person has said they don't like when we talk about sports. No, two. No, there's been a few. No, two. That have told me personally. Personally? Yeah. 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 There's been a couple that right. say, you guys you guys do talk a lot about sports, but that's what we know about. Right. And again- Are you talking to that person right And there? then when when we talk about sports, actually lots of people do, it's just because a couple don't like. I think a lot of people do like when we talk about sports. Yeah. 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 So you want to talk about sports? Yes, okay. I do. <laughs> so- uh, Tell me what you think about the sports. So playoffs, playoff hockey is here again. Uh, in Winnipeg. Yeah, and in a couple other Canadian cities. But all three did, series are tied at one. Did you know in the last so seven years, yeah. the Jets have only missed the playoffs once? Yeah. That's crazy, right? Yeah. People because think, in the first seven years, they only made it once. Right. Yeah. The... Um, <laughs> Spinny wheel. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Maybe you should have had a coffee instead of that water. Oh, I'm doing just fine. You're doing, doing good. Just the Jets are tied fine. 1-1 in their series. So right Leafs, now. Jets, and Canucks all tied at 1. There's some issues in the Leaf, the Jets series and the Vancouver series. Vancouver's lost their goalie. Mm-hmm. Uh, going back to Nashville. Nashville can, you never know what you're going to get with Nashville. So things They're not are, good at home sometimes. The Jets. So it's, talk, talking about home. the Jets at, at home, did you know that last, the game one against the uh, Avalanche was the uh, first time they won a playoff game since 2018. No. 
That's not wasn't right. it because they didn't no, they didn't win a game in Saint, against St. Louis. It's their first win in four years, I think they said, because they did win the game in no three years because they won they swept the series against Edmonton. Like the that was and then uh, they then they got swept against Montreal and right. they hadn't won a home game so, okay. since they swept the series. So then against then then the 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 correct statistic is they have not fans have not seen them. Win at home. Win at home since uh, the series against Las Vegas in game one. And they haven't won. They, people have not seen them win a home playoff game until oh. the night to that one. Yeah. because no, the they Edmonton game was in front of fans. Was it? Yes. Okay. I forgot that. I thought that it was. Wasn't uh, it? Was an, I thought it was an empty building. Man, those years are blurs to me. Was because it was when they were starting to bring right, back fans. Right, they played one remember? in the bubble and then one at home. Remember, remember that yeah, Montreal game? Right. So they, they only hadn't allowed... seen them win yes. since, that, since that game. That's yeah. true. Because wow. they, they lost game one or two wow. against St. Louis, right? Put a like explosion yeah. over my they head. Lost, that they, was, they lost both. Uh, that was mind-blowing. They lost, was it uh, a couple of games last year against Vegas in the first yeah. round, right? They lost And they won and they just lost yesterday, right? Or, yeah, but they won. Yeah, yeah. yeah so they, they, wow. my, my point is they have not won many home games in front of the awesome whiteout. They have not treated the whiteout fans to much success. Uh, since Even the season. series that they won against Nashville back in 2018, they actually only won one game at home. Yeah, that's right. They won that was the a ro- other three in yeah. Nashville. That was a road series, right? Yeah, because they were going back and forth and they were each winning yeah. at their own. Their own barn or their road barns. Um, so the my defense, though, right now for the Jets needs to tighten up. Here's if your- I'm going to an- analyze this team right now, yeah. A, Logan Stanley needs to stop running around trying to hit every person on the ice. I know why he's there. He's yeah. there to bring size and toughness. Yeah. But he needs to stop running around trying to hit every person on the ice like they're – I don't know. Like, there are points for pylons or something. Right. I don't know what he's trying to do because he's always out of position. It's like Pac-Man. Yeah. He's just trying to eat all of the food. And eat. the I other problem the I'm nice. having with it is uh, on a couple of guys that I'm in a group chat with were talking about this yesterday is, I don't know if it's with you or not, but Nikolai Ehlers tends to do two things great. And then he takes two things where he's like, totally out of position or on the ice crying and it's really difficult to cheer for him right. when he goes and like skates around everybody and then passes the puck right skates around everybody yeah. and takes a great shot and scores yeah. we're so excited and then skates around everybody falls yeah. and is laying on the ice when they go down and score yeah that's the argument and the complaint they have about uh, Pedersen in Vancouver right now too okay uh, but um, I haven't watched a lot of the outside my, of the Winnipeg games so here's what I wanted to talk about as far as winning in general in the playoffs. So we had this discussion and I said, hey, the Avs, you know, they have so much of this uh, playoff experience and we don't have as much. And what you said is, well, you add up... uh, uh, To Foley, uh, Foley, Monaghan. Monaghan. My point is... I follow. So when the... Remember when the Avs had like a number of years where they were really good in the regular season? And this is how good a collective group is, not adding up the pieces, right? And they they lost, I can't remember what year it was, but it was like five or six years where they had didn't have playoff success, but they were one of the top four teams in the NHL. And McKinnon said, it is really, really, really hard to win a championship in any league. And then he won the year or two after that, right? Uh, But I think it's true. Like you have to have a collective group go through those struggles year after year after year sometimes same thing with Ovechkin in Washington right yeah. before it seems like you have to keep that group along enough and add the right pieces so eventually they know how to win you and don't you don't have those teams like the Vegas's the St. Louis's are are kind of anomalies where they just come along and, and magic happens and they win that's not the case most well, times when the Kings won too right yeah. like so you, they you, came out of nowhere and won yeah. but the, here's the thing the Jets have those pieces that have been around for so long. Yeah. So now you've got yes, you but, got, but you, they haven't. But they just, haven't. They haven't had deep runs. You could argue they have. I could argue they deep run. In I could argue that Winnipeg Jets have only had two teams that legitimately could, on paper, compete for a Stanley Cup in their whole history: 1985, 2018, and this year. But legitimately. So in 2021. Yeah. And look back at it. The Jets lost to Vegas. Yeah. In the Western Conference Finals, they yeah. went to the Stanley That's Cup. That's one of the years, 2018. Just, they lost to St. Louis the next year, 
who won the Stanley Cup. No. They lost to uh, Montreal, yeah. who went to the Stanley Cup Finals. Yeah. They lost to Vegas last year, yeah. who won the Stanley Cup. The Jets are not losing to teams that get bounced the next series. They're still losing. It doesn't matter, though. Because like, if you think about it, the Jets team that swept Edmonton in 2021... Yeah. Law, got swept by Montreal, and Montreal went on yeah. to keep on going. And and Shifley to, got suspended for that series. Remember that, right? He got suspended for that series, and Shifley got hurt. Um, the series the year before in 2020 against yeah. Calgary, he got the his the back of his leg got yeah. cut. Yeah. Um. So he was out for that one. Yeah. Um. If you look at the series that was, I think last year, Shifley didn't finish as well. I don't believe he did. No, he didn't. The, the, um, uh, and then the Wheeler and years, Shifley were out. Ehlers also yeah. was out for. So, like, the, the collective team has never been as good as they are to this year. Right. 2018 was a good team. Yeah. I'm not saying it was a bad team, but look back on paper at that team yeah. in comparison to this team that we have this year. Yeah. We have IFL who's won a cup. Yeah. To Foley, who's again Monica. pieces. They're Monaghan, coming to pieces. Yes, they are pieces, yeah. but they're leadership pieces. Yeah, but again, they're 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 not a, have they're not a collective group that's gone through the the fire, so to speak. But but whereas McKinnon, Landeskog, Ranton, they have. Yeah, and Shifley, Ehlers, Mon or uh, Morrissey, Lowry, Connor, Hallebach, Pionk, all of these guys together have had deep runs i mean other than 18 everybody except peonk yeah. on that list have been together all i know is and i hope this changes but game one and game uh the lot game two they had totally different games game one was a run and gun yeah game two was kind of uh, get, uh look for turnovers play good defensive and capitalize on your opportunities two different games and you could argue, and I will argue, that Colorado Avalanche were a better team than us in both games. I that don't know if they me. were last game. They The Jets lost. Yeah. And I didn't even look at the, the deserve to win meter at all for this yeah. one. But the Jets held the Colorado Avalanche to three shots yeah. in the third period. Right. And Well, it's because they shut her down. And, and, no, and they no, played, not they just, played a Not just that, game. but like... If you look at the goals the Avalanche got, yeah. they weren't like amazing, like you can't stop these guys' goals. Yeah. The Matson right? goal was a killer. Unfortunately, Hellebuck didn't have his greatest game. Yeah. He hasn't had a great game for the first two games. Right. But if he shows up in any way yeah. for game three. But now, now we're talking if about ninety-five percent Hellebuck shows up. Not even a hundred percent Hellebuck shows up. Yeah. The Jets win Game Three, yeah. no problem. And he gave up a puck in that, in one of those goals too. But you, I Two mean, of them. you're depending on your goaltender to win games. Whereas a team like Las Vegas last year could throw. It seemed like they could throw anyone in net. They want to cut. I don't know. The Jets played Vegas last year, and they threw everything they could at Laurent Brassois. Yeah, Brassois just held them in there. Yeah, they're not asking their goalie to win games for them. That's the difference. We're asking ours to. And, and, and hopefully... Also, Vegas is $10 million over the cap. Hopefully... That's another so, issue. Hopefully, on the before. road, things change. And you tend to... Like, as we've seen from history, and we just pointed this out, you did too, um, we have tended to play better on the road in our history and, you know, through the course of the year. Maybe that changes. I'm hopeful it changes. Maybe I'm a little bit down I, and frustrated think, with the whole thing. But I think our team, because of the experience that they have... Yeah can go on the road and play a much different game than they right. can in front of their own home crowd. Which can be There's the case. Less, yeah. less pressure in front of the road crowd. Yeah. And if they can get that goal yeah. at the beginning to silence the crowd, it yeah. can make things a lot easier for them. Well, we've, the scored, the, we've scored the first two goals. The first two and games. I, I, just, uh, I look forward to seeing games three and four. Yeah. Because those will be very telling to see exactly oh. how the Jets adjust, how they do defensively, and how Hellebuck does. I don't doubt that if Hellebuck comes out and lays another egg right. in game three, that Brassois plays game four. I, I think there's, they're sticking with Hellebuck. It doesn't matter. You know what? I, I, would, I think that you're right, Yeah. but I wouldn't be surprised. Be if sure. he lays an egg and lets in five or six goals right. again, Right. and Laurent Brassois is right there. Yeah. Well, he only let in four. It was, it was the fifth one in empty netter, right? So. Last night the fifth one was empty netter, and yeah. he led in six the night before. Yeah, so, so he goals. has not he has not been good, but the rest of the team, again, if I'm picking the better team in the first two games, it's not been us. 
But that's just me. Well, obviously, the first game, yeah. Colorado like had an eighty yeah. percent deserve to win. Yeah. I don't know what the second game was, but I do know that the Jets played better defensively right. in the second game. Yeah. So, but talking about hockey, <coughs> we're gonna go into a different hockey topic for a quick second here. The Utah hockey, the team. Utah blank. Fill in the blanks here. The owner of the Utah who, Jazz, who's uh, sorry, he owns the Utah Jazz, Ryan now, Smith. Ryan Smith, not uh, Ryan Smith yeah. from the Oilers. So he's our he's 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 a young guy. He's our age, um, and he owns. <laughs> we're young guys now. We went from being old guys. <laughs> no, to I said feel. I didn't say we were old. Oh, I said, okay. Sometimes you feel. Um, yeah. And he so he owns the Jazz. He owns a couple other of the other teams. And now yeah. he's the owner of the NHL hockey team that came yeah. over from Phoenix, right? Uh, and the so the NHL is coming there next year, and uh, they are doing a contest uh, to name the team and the ha- so the whole thing as far as what the emblem is going to look like. Yeah. The, uh, the, the name. I, I think the players got off the plane this uh, yesterday or today yeah. wearing shirts that just said Utah Hockey. <laughs> So it was like a college shirt. It just says Utah hockey on it. They're black and white. Yeah. It's very reminiscent to when the Jets yeah. were like, the, just had the NHL logo during yeah. the, um, yeah. during the draft. Yeah. Right. Like they're just black and white. Yeah. And uh, so uh, they're going so to have black and white jerseys. They're going to say Utah in the front of the They're going to play to the scene. Delta center, which is where uh, the jazz play basketball. Yeah. But I didn't know this until I looked it up and I, and I talked to you guys about it. Uh, 12 to 14,000 people for hockey is all at seats now. Cause they do. I think they do uh, minor league hockey there as well. Get, uh, Bettman did say they're going to renovate it. So they're going to renovate it and they're actually going to go to like 17 or 19,000. Like Good they're adding hockey. quite a bit of seats, which I didn't know was possible. It's kind of yeah. strange how they would do that, but it's going to take like three Three years because of course you can't have an NHL arena that only seats you know 12 13 thousand people here's the thing Utah is a great city for hockey you know what Utah uh, Salt Lake so Yalt, Salt, Lake. Salt Lake City which is the Salt city, city in Utah Utah is uh, a great state for hockey. I've never been there but as far as a city I've heard like, it's very underrated yeah. first of all so well we'll have to check it out when we go see the Jets play there and we'll see I else. think that it's going to be very similar to what Minnesota is for hockey right right like the wild they're the state of hockey right. like they, uh, I Minnesota's think, a pretty big hockey. I'm not sure it's a pretty big hockey city. Yeah, but Salt Lake City has the history of the, the, the gold medal game. Yeah, or sorry, no, that's where they were training. Yeah, no, the, so, Salt Lake had the had the had the Olympics. Yes, they had the Olympics, but before that, the Miracle movie, right? The the training facility was in Salt Lake City, right? Yeah. right? So like yeah. they do have a hockey background, yeah. and I think that they could be very like anything's going to be better than Arizona. Yeah, it, it's funny how it took so long. Like they, 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 they wouldn't move him, move, they wouldn't move him, wouldn't move him, and all them. of a sudden, like throughout the night, there's rumors that they're going to be moved. The next day, they're going to move on next Tuesday or whatever. But it's the, crazy. The same thing happened with the with the Atlanta Thrashers. Right. The Jets were getting the Phoenix yeah. Coyotes all summer, and they actually were going to w- they are going to win an auction or something in whatever city that was for land to build. They're still doing it. Yeah. So they're still trying to do that. Oh, the mayor is but, easy against it, but yeah. But the Jets, um, the Jets thing was overnight as well. Right. Like all of a sudden Atlanta's moving to yeah, Winnipeg. Yeah, but I don't think that Bettman held Atlanta in the same no, regards no. as Phoenix. They didn't. It, seemed like, it seemed like that, that Phoenix was, was Bettman's little baby and he just wouldn't part with it. He was very adamant he wasn't. Yeah. For years and years and years and years, it didn't matter how many things fell through. Yeah. He, he was not going to let that happen. All of a sudden he's like, screw it. Who cares? Yeah. And it's... It seems to have taken a long time, and the Jets are not getting their history back. Yeah, um, no. they said that they're not giving it back. The Greg and Tim show will work hard at seeing if we can uh, break down the doors to get that history back. It is our pledge. Is if that we, something we, we can do? If we can do anything about it, it is our pledge to okay. the viewer. We will make sure the Jets get their history. Transitioning, back. same topic, but this was crazy because uh, you had done some work on the uh, the <laughs> yeah. Utah, and you had you had named them. And you came up with with a design for yeah. the logo, uh, and uh, so you showed us. It looked really awesome. Actually, did yeah. a really good, I don't know how much how much time you spent on it, but it looked really cool. I spent zero time I, on I it. I can imagine, but I it, worked on it right. And uh, and then the next day, there was like these videos about somebody putting the and it was almost the exact same <laughs> logo with the like the Yeti, the Utah Yeti. It was like yeah, they stole I, your idea. I call it. It's got to be the Utah Yeti. Yeah. like that's the perfect name for yeah. that team. The yeah. Utah Yeti. Yeah. Like, I don't know. And you could have like a giant abominable snowman yeah. as your mascot yeah. that has like crazy Can we, can eyes. we show your design up? Can we throw yeah, your design I'll throw up? it up. Yeah. So the design, basically AI can do anything you want it to do these right. days. So like I, I made it with AI 
And I thought the Yeti is a great name. And yeah. then all of a sudden you send me this picture yeah. that looks very similar. Yeah. Somebody else did it with AI probably and had yeah. a similar Well, thing. you spoke it to your phone and your phone heard it, sent it through the internet. Yeah. Some guy heard it and stole your idea. So again, if you can support our legal action against, against, against this Utah. individual, please send funds to Greg and Tim show <laughs> at GoFundMe. But it, it's, <laughs> I, I think it'd be great if they were called the Yeti. Uh, everybody's going with Storm and Mormons. I don't think that's, uh, that's politically correct. Zero percent <laughs> chance that's going to happen. They did. Um, they did. Um, what about the fact that can't you have multiple wives there? Like, what, what the was Mormons. it called? Polygamous? Pol- they could just be the polygamous? The Utah Is that what polygamous means? More than one wife? Polyamory? I yeah, don't know. Something like that. Um, <laughs> also, not going to happen. No. Also, I'm not sure what the logo would look like. <laughs> just a bunch of women on the shirt. <laughs> it could be like the, the spring training shirt, but women. <laughs> yeah. The spring training shirt that we don't speak of. Um, no, no, I meant the one. I know which one you're meeting. Okay. <laughs> I, I wasn't talking was about that one. Yeah. Okay, there's two. But uh, I, I think the Yeti would be a great, I think that you could have like a gritty style mascot yeah. with googly eyes and yeah. all fun and everything like that. Mascots are fun, man. And like, the, and then the Yeti. Don't you wish you were a mascot the, sometimes? Can you imagine the Yeti and Gritty and uh, the, the Kraken the person Kraken just mascot. fight each other? Did you see the mascot fight? The other day, I've been, I, there's been so many. I don't no, know. Um, so the president's race was happening in that in Washington for the Nationals game, and they run around. Oh the, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. Um, <laughs> the Nationals mascot, like he opened the door to the outfield, yeah, and he got all the mascot friends from around the area to yeah. come out, and they started yeah. beating up the president. Teddy's in the lead. Watch out, Teddy. There's mascots. Oh. Teddy goes down, Tom goes down, George goes down, Abe is down. The Duke dog just took out Abe. The other presidents are all down. Teddy goes down again, he can't even get up. It's a melee of Screech's friends. What are we gonna do? Mama Screech is telling Screech just to cross the line. Screech, go ahead and take it. The winner is Screech. And I'm like, what is going on here? This is super weird. Oh, the do we ever do the, do the bombers still have Buzz and Boomer? Yeah, I very I don't see them much. Oh yeah, they're at every game. Okay, well, maybe I'm just not paying attention. <laughs> maybe I've had a few. How many games have you been to? Uh, no comment. Exactly. No comments at all. Tim does not like to support local. I do. Does when? not local sports teams. <laughs> I need to do better. If you have a local business, yeah. like coffee, for instance, you have a local <laughs> coffee business, clothing business, uh, energy bar business, anything local like that, yeah. <laughs> Tim will support you. He loves supporting local when yeah. it comes to purchasing items from local people. Yes. But when it comes to sports... No. Tim does not support local. Well, I get a couple of free games every year. That's not supporting local. No, but it saves, like you, saying, it saves me money. Here's a free t-shirt from Nike. Yeah. I support Nike. No, <laughs> you true. got a free t-shirt from Nike. I will admit, since the... Are the, you a Twins fan? Since the time Why that... Why do you wear I, the Bayern I, I, Buxton no, no, I, shirt? I, I admit it. I admit it. Since the time that we don't speak of, I have not spent very much money on going to Jets and Bomber games or Gold Eyes games. Any money. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I admit it. Okay, you so can... uh, cut at the 40-minute <laughs> mark here almost, and we're going to get out of the sports talk. So anybody that uh, sat through that, thank you. Yeah. Anybody that didn't sit through that, I get it. I, I don't get I do get it. Actually, I do get it, yeah. You get it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, anyway, we're going to move on to – I wanted to talk really quickly. Uh, I know that our main topic of the day is going to be the Taylor Swift album. We're going to move on – past the Taylor before the Taylor Swift album we're going to talk about that yes right there I know <laughs> but I wanted to let everybody know the Taylor Swift talk is coming so if you're looking for the ta- forward to figuring out what we're talking about with Taylor Swift it's coming it's coming it's like it's like the main event you know how like at UFC yeah you have all the undercards I, I was the ta- stuff that people I was, don't watch my, do- my, my daughter actually was in Toronto and this is another story and and she's like the Jays were playing and she's like oh should I go I like, yeah you should go you're right in there you go to the yeah. the game and she got a baseball at, at batting practice uh, and the Jays won uh, that was the first um, start for the, the uh, who was it Yariel the, Rodriguez. Rodriguez yeah she had a great game but, her, a beast. but she was at a friend that she was driving and he had yep. to get to UFC he went to get to the UFC party in Mississauga, Mississauga or something Okay, and he's like oh it starts at 6 o'clock it's like it doesn't start at 6 no 
like even I know, and I don't watch so much UFC. I think it's eight for the main cards. Uh, yeah, it's nothing is starting. Like they have all these two hours of absolutely nothing. Yeah, the I mean, prelims it, it does, is what they call it. It does not them. start at six, but I guess if you're you know drinking and stuff, ultimate does. fighting championship. Yeah, but those undercards. It's are, one of the things I haven't suck. really gotten into. I have watched it with people, and it's yeah. exciting to watch with people. Right, but I gotta look away. Right, I'm really bad with squeamishness. Oh yeah, I wouldn't want my face punched in like that. I'm not. Uh, uh, a ultimate fighter UFC kind of guy. Yeah. I've never been to a party with it. No. Uh, no. We should have one. But I don't have interest. At your house. But I don't have interest. You would love it. We did it once, actually, because I think my daughter wanted to watch it one time. And I don't think it was a bunch of people. I think it was just Just you and your daughter of, watching maybe. fighting. I don't even remember. Watching it. men in unitards fighting each other. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway, I wanted to, I, I just want to talk real quick about our interviews that we did. Um, we've done one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, we've done seven, five eight, interviews. Nine, just five. We've actually we've got a sixth one coming yeah. that I'm uh, in the process of uh, working on, and a seventh one scheduled, and an eighth one, and a ninth one yeah. almost almost finalized. So, but like our first ones, like we had Dr. Dan Chenier, chiropractor. I learned a ton. From that interview, I think that like if people watch that one, it's great. That it was, one, what was do you think? it was a lot colder. It was uh, a lot colder outside, and, uh, and you get to see Tim Topless. If you didn't see Tim Topless yet, that's where you get to see Tim. And Topless. that's when you want to skip the chapters. That's right. That's the very last part. Yeah. Uh, then we interviewed Adam Big Hill, yep. local football player for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Bombers, one of the best in the CFL. Yeah, that was a very interesting conversation. Our first interview we ever did was Greg Zahn, uh, ex. Uh, Toronto Blue Jay. We did that one by Zoom. Yeah. Um, we did another, not by Zoom, but by remote. Something where his face appears and on he a speaks screen. on a screen. And we appear on his screen and yes. vice versa. Then we also he did a versa. remote interview with uh, Drew Dudley, which yeah. I thought that one was fantastic. As well. Like, that interview, I really, really liked it. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting how we did the interview with Jasmine Lane right after that one. Yeah. And we kind of steered in the same direction in some of those interviews. Right. So what I'd like to know is what was your favorite interview? I don't want to... You don't want to... They, they were all really good in their own way. And I, yeah. I kind of hesitate to pick a favorite. Because you're they're all your because babies. Because they're, they were very good each in the, their different way. But for me, the Drew Dudley interview was my favorite. <laughs> I don't want to pick a favorite, but for me, <laughs> no, no. Again, I, I, they're all my favorite. When you say but one, Drew when you, when you say one thing is your favorite, you, you're, you're lessening, or you, it can appear yeah. that you're lessening some of the other ones. I'm not you, doing. That. You had the most fun. Is that yeah. what you're going to say? Like you and, had the most and, enjoyment. And, and, and no, uh, before that, I thought Doctor Dan. It, was, it said Doctor Dan's was my favorite. So, like, they, they're all very, very, very good, and I enjoyed yeah. every one of them. But yes, I, I would say. Uh, so our last interview was with Jasmine Lane. Um, it came out last week. I thought it was very good. Uh, it's great to be, we're being diverse yeah. with our interviews. Like we haven't interviewed the same kind of person twice. Right. Like we've got a baseball player and a football player. Yes, both sports, but like a chiropractor, a, um, a media personality yeah. on the radio, and then somebody who's a, a uh, best-selling author. Yeah. And even our next few interviews are all very different. So yeah. if you're if you're here for the interviews, they're still coming. This we're not going to be just yeah. like this all the time, right? But we're going to be like this so every now and the, again. The, the question is, how much do you want to see us? Like, say in the comments, I really like when you do the interviews because I don't have to listen to you guys jabber on about sports and other things we couldn't care less about. Yeah. Or you you might say, no, I kind of like that when you intersperse uh, you guys talking in between other interviews. I kind of like a combination. And then someone might say, you know, I don't like you doing interviews at all. Like, where or do you, I don't where like do, you where at do all. You, where do you, you know, you could say Greg needs a haircut, which he told I, me before I he started. I actually don't want to listen to anything you yes. guys put out. You know what? Honestly, sometimes I don't want to listen to me either. So... <laughs> but uh every, every time you send me something to to look over i'm like oh i have to listen to me again you don't like listening to yourself talk i am not a fan of listening to myself talk yeah. but you know what then i listen to the episode and i like i really enjoy it yeah. uh, but I yeah i i tend to not like hearing myself <laughs> which is like you know a bad thing when you're doing a, a format where every week you're recording an hour to an hour and 50 minutes which is what uh and, jasmine's was and i i think that uh every interview that we've done i've learned something about 
my guests yeah. or our guests. Yeah. I've learned something about myself. Yeah. I've learned something about like a different way of looking at things. Right. And I think it's uh I think it's important to uh to reflect on some of that stuff that we've learned ourselves. And I think our interviews are getting better yeah. personally. I just uh I'm tooting my own horn here right now. Yeah. I think that our our interviews have gotten better. Yeah. And I want people to be the judge of that. I want people to watch them and check them out and tell me how bad they are. Yeah. And I, <laughs> oh, good so I, I agree. I mean, in general, when you do something over a long period of time and it's consistent, you should improve it, which, which we have in general, even the times that we talk here and there. Well, like, yeah. like when you go back to our first episode, you've <laughs> said this many times, right? <laughs> it's like it's like night and day. You're not very good now, but you're way worse then. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I digress. I'm just kidding. But like, especially for the interviews too. It's come and, a long way. And, and for me, it's like how to be fluent when you speak. The, even though, like you say, the tone, um, how loud you're speaking, um, it's just a work in progress for me. And I, I hope I'm getting better. And I, I think I am. RBF. RBF some, is the part. Some, sometime, sometimes the uh, if improvement seems slow, but then all of a sudden, you know, I, I, I tend to improve slowly, improve slowly, and all of a sudden, wow, I got really good you know, overnight. That's kind of my, my thing, which is annoying because sometimes I say I don't learn quickly, and that can be accurate. Uh, well, but this is yes. episode number 34. Yeah. So by 100, you know, I'm going to be an expert. I'm going to be doing the news on CTV, <laughs> and I'm going to be moving, on from, Lloyd moving on from this gig. But I will say this about the interviews. Um, Lloyd Robertson <laughs> will be <laughs> incapacitated because you will take over his uh, job. He kind of looks like me a bit older. A little bit, Lloyd? He looks way better than you. Older, a bit older. Better? Lloyd. I look, I'm a, I'm He's a, got a good I'm an attractive. Too. I'm an attractive fella. Okay. Anyway, so <laughs> I, 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 uh, but like what I've learned about the interviews is uh, the art of asking the right question the right way, where we've hit some uh, topics that are near and dear to my heart, and they but they've been very deep topics. Yeah. Right. And there's not much, and there's some stuff we haven't delved into because okay, that's too personal. Yeah. Or we're not going to go into there because it might, you know. That might be a question that you might need be, not be comfortable with, but we have asked some questions that are really hot button topics. Yep. Not just with Jasmine, but with Drew, um, uh, with Doctor Dan, Dan. Uh, and and this next week that's coming up too. But you know, not being afraid to have a conversation, mm -hmm. but being having a conversation in the right way, and that's really an art form where you say the right question the right way. And then you get a response where you have a good conversation and people aren't necessarily defensive. Yeah. About and and we don't send our the people we interview, we don't send them the questions beforehand. No. So they if you see them uh, asking a question answering a question, they have not heard these questions. Yeah. Um, and so whenever they come up with an answer, it's because we want an authentic response from them. Uh, and and to the, for the most part, we, we, we do get that. And it leads to good conversation. And we might have, I think for Jasmine, we might have had 20 questions and we got through three. Yeah. Because we, we at least to other discussions. Yeah. Uh, and I'm really- We also don't let them know about the silly stuff we do. Right. So yeah. we try to, well, we let them know there's yeah. going to be silly stuff. And, 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 you, and you like, and I do too, where you mix it up where it's not so serious all the time. The one that we're doing next week is, is more of the serious side because- for me, anyways, it's a topic that's close to my heart and it's really important. Yeah. But for the most part, you know, we start when we talk to uh, Jude Dudley. You know, we start just 20 minutes of nonsensical, you know, where where maybe it doesn't seem to the viewer that we're getting any points, but we're really learning learning something about that guest. And yeah. by the end of that 20 minutes, you say, I really know that person and what they're like, their character, their personality. So that when we do ask those tougher questions, they say, yeah. we trust that person and we have so, that rapport with them to get those serious answers. So to close this off, I want to ask one question of our listener here. Yeah. If you have somebody that you think that we should be interviewing yeah. or you have a contact of somebody that we should be interviewing. Now, we, we have a couple interviews coming up that aren't people that are like public personalities yeah. they're they're gonna be people that most people won't know yeah. but we think they're interesting right right so if you have somebody that's interesting we want to know who that person is yeah. why they're interesting to you and what like what they've done or what they're doing that type of thing send them our way we'll 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 check it out and you know set up time and see if we can do an interview with them because i think that we have so many great people in Manitoba and so many great people in Winnipeg in general that uh, we could interview people just from Winnipeg for three years and never get to every 
every interesting person in Winnipeg. Right. I mean, everyone's interesting in their own way. Yeah. You just don't kind of know it. By and some people that are interesting don't even know they're interesting. Right. If you think about it. Right. Right? So, anyway, we do have a couple more coming up. Uh, we have one coming up next week. So, next week we'll be back to the interview format, which will be very, uh, it'll be a very good topic for Tim because it was one that was near and dear to his heart, as he says. Um, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's going to be a great episode. Okay. I, I just uploaded all the footage yeah. and made sure that it was all um, good. Yeah. So, yeah. Editing editing is fun for me, so I do look forward to editing it. I like to make you look good. And I and I promised because As Drew Dudley so, okay. says we look good. Yes. Did he say you look good or we look good? He we said look, we, look, we good. look good. Yeah. And yeah. we and we did. Second time he we, said it. We did and we did. Yeah. Well, uh, we it, did. Yeah. Well, we all Drew did. did too. We all did. He had magic hour. He was lucky. Yeah, he had he, like real lighting <laughs> and. <laughs> Oh. We have all this fake stuff. You guys can't see it, but it's uh, it's it's good. It's bright. Don't look at it. I was gonna like inter- the... I was gonna interject something, and then I completely forgot. My brain Perfect. went. It went over there behind Again. that light. There, it's gone. It'll Not come back to me in five minutes. So let's move on to the topic of the day. Hot button topic. Topic of the day. Do on song. Friday. Yeah. Do you have a song for the topic of the day? I forget. It's been so long. Hip hip hooray! It's time, it's time for, for the, the topic, topic of the day. Of the day. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's, let's go to that. Okay, hooray. It's time for the topic of the day. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, All right, so... Uh, topic of the day here's is... Here's the topic of the day, and it's twofold. Number one, Taylor Swift's album uh, just came out, and it is called The Tortured Poets Department. It had 16 tracks in total and 15 extra songs. 15 extra songs! So it came out at 15, midnight. 15, 31 total. So stop yelling. 31! We're in a small space. It has 31 songs! It had 15 tracks when it came out. Tortured Poets. Tortured, tortured Poets. Poets. Department. Department. TT. The sorry, Tortured T-T- Poets T-T-P-D Department. TTPD for short. So it came out with the 15 songs. Yes. And then it became the Tortured poets department anthology right at 2 a.m she released 16 more songs right so we have 31 new taylor swift songs to add to our playlist i don't have anything written for this either (laughs) we have oh i do i do (laughs) why did i throw it away (laughs) we have 31 new songs from taylor swift to add to our playlist yeah that we are going to a enjoy, yeah. B not like, right? C be indifferent towards. So, so, so part one of the conversation is is about the album, and yeah. then we're going to go into part two, which is a more important part of our discussion, I think. Uh, but be, because I understand that people do not want two middle aged men trying to critique a Taylor Swift album, I decided to get an expert opinion, okay. and that is my daughter Taylor. Who just turned nineteen? And she was named after Taylor Swift. She was absolutely not named after Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift, nineteen years ago, was very early in her development as an artist and was not nearly what she is today. In fact, I'm not even sure she was doing anything nineteen years ago. She was barely starting. She was a tiny, tiny yeah, I don't know. country artist, I think. Probably. I don't even know how old very she is. Very tiny. She anyway, like so she then. gave this album, and she's an expert. She loves Taylor Swift. She's been to her concert once. She's been to two concerts. One time where they, they were at the old stadium. Sorry, yes. there was at the new stadium. But um, uh, as, I think it was the first year it opened this, yeah, the stadium. I remember the uh, that was the Red Tour, and she went when she was uh, you know, she was much younger than with her friend and her mother uh, at the stadium outdoor concert, and then she went to Minneapolis uh, last year. Last year, yeah, that's correct. Uh, for that, um, the Eras Tour. So she's been twice. She actually has tickets to the, the, the concert in Toronto, Toronto, but she is going to be smart and sell those tickets and save some money because flights and places to stay are insane. Oh, so she's not going now. That's the plan. We'll okay. see. She's got She's got a couple tickets. Uh, we're going to see what she want to do with them, but it will cost some money because all and the you guys also are paid. You guys also paid big money to see it at the theater. Uh, we went. To, yeah, we went to go see Eras the concert, but what thirty bucks compared to 
you know, a ticket to a concert's nothing. Right? Yeah, I can I watch it on. Park. I can watch it on Disney Plus yeah, for free now. Yeah, but you won't. No, Lorraine has had it on a few times. Oh, just randomly because it's like three and a half hours. I think Lorraine's a big fan, eh? No, she just has it on. She I think. has it on. Just happens. I to think be she on. wants to see the production value of it, which is apparently great. It's almost sorry. As good I, as this I, show. Wa- I watched it. It's almost as good as this show. Yeah. So I, 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 I imagine I, we can make this table turn into like a like a <laughs> like a lake and we can swim under it. So and I've said this before. I'm pro. Don't ask me to do that. I. I <laughs> I'm not going to sit there and download all of Taylor Swift's albums. I'm not a massive fan. I don't. I'm yeah. not. A, I'm not a hater either. I, I thought the stuff that she did with the NFL with uh, Travis Kelsey was cool. We've talked about I it. I was times. never annoyed by it, and <laughs> and I wasn't. And and as far as her can we songs, play the tape back. <laughs> <laughs> I you can you absolutely can I, I I'm confident about that. Okay. Uh, but her stuff I went I, like like you said I went to the Eras uh, thing at Grant Park with my daughter and her yep. seven friends and I mean the production level is great. Um, you know the songs are good. I'm never going to be a massive fan. But what she, Taylor says about this particular album is she gives it an eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. And there, you want to give the whole review? No, I don't. Um, I don't you think, think it's we overly need to... descri- descriptive. No, I'm, she has about one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. <clears throat> Here's the thing. Her favorite. She... Her favorite song is the title track that she was surprised by, and that was uh, the first song with the song. No, Postal. her favorite song it's was uh, "So Long London" and Peter. Uh, okay. Um, so Long London is about her ex-boyfriend. Right. A lot of Taylor Swift songs in this I don't know album. if you knew this, but a lot of her songs are about ex-boyfriends. <laughs> about so, ex-boyfriends. Yeah. This one is about her ex-boyfriend who was from London. Apparently, she spent a lot of time for seven years in London right. with this ex-boyfriend. Right. Or with, with, at the time, boyfriend. Yeah. Um, I watched a video about this because I wanted to do some research. Yeah. Because I didn't want to be an idiot. <laughs> and uh, it turns out that... Uh, a lot of the rumors were towards Taylor Swift wanting to get married. Yeah, she spoke a lot about wanting to get married, and the rumor is they broke up because he didn't want to get married. Right, and they spent seven years together, which lends to the question of like how long is too long? Right, to spend with somebody until they commit. Yeah, essentially, right. So non-committal, and and then uh, the song Fortnite, which is not about the, the video game. game. Although it probably gets some looks that because it's called Fortnite, I was I was disappointed. That's not about the video <laughs> game. Um, Taylor, Taylor, your daughter, yeah. said she doesn't love Post Malone, and she thought it would she thought it wouldn't mix well. Here's the thing: I don't know if you've noticed lately, but Post Malone is really changing yes. his music. Yeah. He's getting more folky, more, and he's done now duets now with Taylor Swift and with uh, Noah Noah Khan. Yeah. He sang the national anthem, I believe, at the uh, Super Bowl this year. So So obviously changing, that would help if you did. He's singing more, right? So yeah, he's on the song Fortnite. So she was surprised. No, and and, and Taylor was surprised that. Top five. Taylor Taylor was very surprised of how well they sang together. Yeah. So for those of you that are listening or watching, Taylor has a few. I'm going to read just a couple of them here right. for her hits. Fortnite, So Long London, L-O-M-A, L-O-M-L, Love of My Life. I Can't Do With a Broken Heart, The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived. That was a decent song. The Alchemy, uh, The Black Dog, and then she's got a whole bunch of other ones on here, so don't don't judge her. I'm not reading all of them out. Uh, her mids, mids, that's a technical term for uh, uh, I'm not paying attention to the podcast, right? It, it, no, it, <laughs> the mids is kind of in the middle. Yeah, the middle. I understand what the mids is. Yeah. It's just a technical term by the. Um, you, know, you don't have to worry about that. Right. It's just a technical term by the uh, by the kids these days. Yeah, tortured poets department, fresh out of sl- the slammer. My boys only break his favorite toys. I can fix it. I heard my boys only break his fa- the favorite toys is a very broken song. Like not very doesn't flow well. The misses and this surprises me because yep. it's going to get into our next topic about the album. Yep. Uh, Cassandra, Florida, which I which is sad. I we, actually we, liked we, the we song. Like, we like Florida. I actually listened to that and the song, state. We really like and the state. I liked the song Florida. Yeah. Uh, but Daddy, I love him. Yeah. And then the most important song on the whole album to me yeah. is called Thank You, Amy, right. which Taylor says is a big miss. Is, and also, I'm glad that uh, But Daddy, I Love Him as a, as a, as a dad. <laughs> but Daddy, that's I a Love miss, Him. Because that, that song miss. is not great if, uh, if so, you are dad. 
<laughs> so she doesn't go on to tell us why she didn't like Thank You, Amy. Right. Now, if you're new to Taylor Swift and you're new to uh, uh, Kim Kardashian, if you're new to Kanye West, if you're new to the podcast, yeah. Kim Kardashian, Kanye West gave Taylor Swift a very hard time for a few years. It started with the awards the infamous, show uh, where taking he came of, and interrupted uh, yeah. her. Then it came to the song that he sang about her. Yeah. Then it came to them saying that she gave permission to sing this song and they doctored like this recording. Um, Dave Portnoy goes very strong against Kim Kardashian with a very big disdain. Yep. I'll use the word disdain, yep. dislike, anger towards Kim Kardashian because he's a very big Swifty. Yep. Dave Portnoy, Barstool Sports, big yep. Swifty. It's Thank You, Amy is essentially a song about Kim Kardashian. Yep. The one line that I thought was was kind of funny was when she said, I hope your daughter sings this song not knowing it's about you. Yeah. That type of thing. I, I don't know. the. I wish I had something well, the, to the, give me the, the words. I, the idea of the song is you gave me a hard time. It made me stronger. Yeah. And, and the idea is I'm so big now and you're like, you know, fading from existence that maybe your daughter will, you know, listen to my song because she yeah. would because I'm popular and, and you're not. You're just yeah. kind of a ten, you know, whatever. On, on Kim Kardashian's side right now, though, she has a new, um, a new show coming, I think, on Netflix. Right. She's actually branching out to more and more media again. Right. So I'm wondering if she's gone through something now that she's going to start becoming more and more predominant in the media again now right. that her thing with Kanye. Kanye's over and that kind of stuff. We talked about Kanye briefly with Drew. the Drew Dudley episode yeah. and how much uh, he's he might have challenges in terms of his mental health and that type of thing. So not to make fun of Kanye, but... Yeah. Well, th that's popular to make fun of Kanye. Yeah, yeah, but here's the thing. Like like Drew says, there's, there's people that are aided and abetting what he's doing because they're riding his money, yeah. they're riding his coattails, of all course. that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. So, like, when they believe him that, you know, Taylor Swift said he could say this stuff and they didn't believe Taylor and Taylor went through the whole spiral of everything she went through. Yeah. If you look at it now, though, like, Taylor is coming out like a rose. Yeah. Well, we, yeah. Well, we talked about this before, you know, she could put out anything now and it's a hit, right? I mean... Yeah, she's, 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 she's on no. top of the world. Can you explain it exactly how you no, said it prior to the episode? I cannot. You said Taylor could this, yeah, it, and people would still uh, buy it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. We won't explain. We won't, it. we won't explain it. Yeah. Like Taylor. Taylor's. Taylor's got that following. She is almost Beatles esque. I would say right now. Right now, she's on top of the world. Yeah. Whether yeah. I would compare her to the Beatles in today's day. It's a good question. We won't delve into that, but I, I understand why you're saying that. And here's the cool thing is that she's remastering all of her albums yeah. so that she owns them again. Yeah. And because she doesn't own the originals. And not to mention she has all the rights because she writes all these songs, right? Like if you... Well, she didn't originally. No, but but now she does. Now right? she will as she um, keeps remastering And, and them. she has been a songwriter for many, many years, right? So yeah. versus somebody who gets songs written for them, like, like someone like Elvis... Um, yeah. Who did not write songs? He didn't. He when he died, he didn't own. So all. there, there is a lot of um, criticism about Taylor still being with this current producer, yeah, because of him doing a lot of like synth style yeah. of music and not letting it be like rock style and yeah. like getting really grittier, yeah, right? And that, and that was one of your comments you made about the album, and there was no rockier songs in it they're all very low-key subdued maybe sounding very similar in some instances a lot of them sound very similar like they have the same synth beat in yeah. behind them right right just different words just or laying different back inflections. on the rhythm uh that but, kind of thing but here's the thing there's so many songs that i listen to on this album yeah. that i'm like if you just added some guitar yeah. added some drums got like some a little bit grungier sound to right. it you could there's, there's no shake it off here well, even shake it off. It's not. It's poppy, right? Like, yeah, but it, it, it's it's got a she, kick. It's got a kick to it. She could she could not like go Alanis Morissette. Yeah, but she could make some of these songs more a kick in the a kick right. in the teeth, right? right? Yeah. But you know, um, not 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 trying to get off of the Taylor Swift talk right away. But uh, a concert I went to recently that 
me and you, I don't think you really even knew about this person prior. I really had no Noah Khan. Noah no, no Khan. Noah Khan and um, uh, what's her name? Olivia Rodrigo just recently did a little duet at Olivia Rodrigo's concert. Yeah. It's funny because prior to that, I was at the Noah Khan concert, yeah. which I discovered him at that time. Yeah. Music is awesome. Right. I don't know. If you haven't listened to Noah Khan and you want some great upbeat music, Check it out. I really like yeah, it. you really liked the concert. You were it, texting me the whole time, but you really liked the concert. It was a very good concert. <laughs> and you said, oh, well, you know, he's, he's no Olivia Rodrigo. And I'm like, he... I don't know. think he's at that level yet. And my kids concurred he's not quite at that level yet. He, but he is getting But there. he's selling out arenas. Yeah. And I... He did, that is true. That's very true. And, like, he sold out the arena here. Yeah. And then, like, the next week he's on stage with Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah. He's only going to get bigger. Yeah. And I'm afraid that he sold out this arena here that we may not get to see him come back. Right. Because he, because of size. Because it's a smaller-ish arena and he could sell the Staples Center, which is 20,000 versus 15,000 in MTS, and then he doesn't have to come to Winnipeg? Well, 11,000 because yeah. it's a end zone thing, right? So yeah, Staples oh, Center yeah, would be yeah, like 16,000, yeah, right? right? Yeah. So I, I think the big thing is we could probably see him maybe like in Fargo, yeah. like the Fargo Dome. Which I don't... Is it that much bigger, the Fargo Dome? The Fargo Dome's a football stadium, so yeah, the but it's floor a is a lot bigger. small football stadium. It's not a big football stadium, but I have to check out the capacity. I'm not sure what yeah. it is. Either way, it would be bigger because the floor size is bigger. Right. Right? You can have a bigger yeah. stage. You can... Yeah, like, I've, been, I've been to concerts. There or the Alara Center, yeah. like that kind of thing, right? Yeah. I, I really like to know Khan. Um, if, if you haven't listened to him yet, he's kind of folksy country but like not country twang but country rock i don't know it's hard to describe yeah, him yeah most country artists kind of going away from the twang now but yeah i thought of, it was really good yeah. i i've uh i'm not gonna lie i've actually been hooked on his music for the last little while and whenever i'm driving to the chiropractor to get my neck fixed that's hooked on the, the con and, they, and you can't really do this before huh? I can't, but then afterwards well, you're like oh my neck feels it's great not really, I'm into the music. it's not really head bopping music but it's good music right. Yeah. It's shaking head, head shaking music shake it off i really shake that, it off that uh sh- did that hurt I, your eyeballs i uh, I, sh- I shook you a little your eyeballs i shook a little too hard that last time just have to adjust just have to adjust okay i'm good now okay. so let's transition here this is what i really wanted to get into on this topic oh going yeah. back to i didn't Ta- know we had more going back to taylor swift's album yeah. okay so it is garnering uh, a little bit of controversy uh yeah. in social oh, media right. I do remember this in part. the news because the songs, and I was in a place, a, a business uh, place at the um, local business. Uh, yeah, and and I we were, ta- were we got on the topic of this Taylor Swift album, and she said, yeah, yeah, we really I don't know how we got on this topic, but I really love this 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 uh, this album, yeah. but I can't play it. And I said, well, why can't you play it? Because it has bad language. Yeah. And then that got me thinking that uh, at a public place you can't play this album because of the bad language. I that's when I thought about reviewing it, re- listening to it, seeing what it was. And yes, they're is quite a few uh, swear words. Yep. Uh, the F word is uh, predominantly the one that's used in a lot of the songs. In her anger. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and I hear on social media that, you know, that how dare she use this bad language. It's just no place for our kids that are listening to this. Uh, they're, uh, they shouldn't uh, be able to listen because it's so bad. It's really predominant like this. Yeah. So, so my question is, and this is kind of a, a general topic, but where does swearing fit in the arts uh, for a comedian? Let's see. No, let, let me finish the question. Yeah. Let me set up the premise before you answer it. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, as far as like stand-up comedians, yeah, uh, we see it sometimes in in poetry. Um, we see it in music specifically, uh, where when you're ex- expressing something, um, is it okay to use? Poor language and even dealing specifically with the F word, but even swears in general, right? To use, uh, we'll call it quote unquote poor language or expressive in what we would call a swear word. Second question, um, is there a hierarchy of swears uh, that some are worse than others? And what makes it offensive in the general public? What makes a one word, if I say, you know, that's not offensive, but if I use another word, you know, I'm just I'm just saying some gibberish word or whatever. Um, but we've said this before, like the word uh, crap. Yeah, you know, is said from I've heard it on pulpits. You know, from 
from from from pastors that I've been yeah. to when I've, I've been on the road, right? But if you say the sh word, that's a bad word, right? So yeah. there's a hierarchy of swears, it seems to me. So, so and, and 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 I'm just going to back up just so that we have a clear understanding okay, of, of, of the question. question. <laughs> um, and 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 like I say, is 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 it okay to use? Do you think it's okay to use some of the time, all the time, or does it matter uh, in what circumstance it is? And again, second question: Are there are some that are worse than others. So obviously there's some swears that are worse than others. Here's the thing. Music has gotten so desensitized these days that yes, Taylor Swift swears in her album, but it's not as bad as a lot of other places that you right. hear swears. Even Noah Kahn's album, there's swears in it. Like there isn't there's like four really good songs that I really like. Yeah. That has one swear in each song. Right. Just one. Yeah. And it's like, if you didn't have that one swear in the song, I could listen to it with my kids in the car. Right. And there was no need for it. Like the hook was good. The music was good. The melody was good. Um, Dial Drunk is the one I'm talking about for right. Noah Khan. One swear. Yeah. In the whole, in the whole song. Um, I think Northern Attitude has a swear from Noah Khan. Uh, Thank You Amy on, on the Taylor Swift album has a swear in it. But it's... I don't know if it's like needed now, like comedians, a lot of times are swearing. They, comedians I think it will comes often hand have, in hand yeah. with being in comedy. Do you ever a have like a clean comedian yeah. isn't as popular as a one that swears. And you'll often have a comedian that does two shows, right? The early show of family friendly yeah, and the late show. Yeah. I right? still think most comedians that swear will do them all the time. <sighs> remember the, remember, um, Will Smith saying that he didn't have to swear to sell at records because right. he doesn't swear on his records. Yeah. And then um, Eminem saying, Will Smith doesn't have to swear to sell records. Well, F him and F you too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. and, and then everybody's like, yeah, 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 Eminem's right. Right. Like, I think that swearing is like this is what people think of it more as like a, as a rite of passage when they get older, right. that they can swear and they can they can say whatever they want. Yeah, the freedom of speech is there, and their parents aren't going to judge them anymore because yeah. they're eighteen now. And when they listen to music with swears in it, I think uh, I think you sent me a video like swearing elicits a different emotion yeah. in people. So the video I sent, and there's a couple. Um, one I watched the entire documentary, basically the history of swearing. Yeah, uh, and there is there there is some evidence that using swears can lower somebody's anxiety stress level stress level um and just versus using everyday language right and what happens yeah. if you the if you if you hit your your finger with a hammer well what comes out the, even yeah. the best person you sometimes there's a word that comes out naturally other than kafui right so and here's the thing a swear is only a swear when you think it's a swear right so somebody who doesn't swear like let's say mark shifley right. who plays hockey well, that we know of that he doesn't. But no, let's just let's just assume that what what he's saying is true because he's mic'd up and yeah. we don't hear him swear yeah. on the ice. Right. His swear word is frick. Yeah. Now, frick means the same thing. Right. Because the intention there is that frick means you know what? Yeah. Is frick now a swear? Right. Or because he's saying it as frick, it's not a swear. Or when you when you hit your hand with a hammer and you're like, Arsha, rock, rock, and, rick, and, yeah. and you do the whole Joe Pesci imitation from Home Alone. Shoot, jump, 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 jump. What? 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 Is that a swear? Now, Home Alone, Joe Pesci, I remember, I think there was an interview about this. Joe Pesci actually was told he couldn't swear in the movie. Right. So he made his own language <laughs> of swears that he that said <laughs> on Home Alone. <laughs> kind of so Rick and Freck and Rick and Ratchin is I, like him swearing. Yeah. Is him swearing <laughs> on Home Alone without actually being yeah. deemed a swear. Right. Now, that's the question. I think that's the real question is right. when is a swear an actual swear? Right. Not like crap versus SH. Yeah. But like crap versus reckon, you yeah. know, like it's, it's an emotion, right? Like a lot of times swears are emotions right. and, um, they say that like, 
can't remember which way it goes. You're, you're, I, I don't know for sure. But they say that educated people don't have to swear right. to get their emotions out. Right. Whereas uneducated people need to swear. Right. And that's one of the things I read on the, or heard in the documentary is that the lack of swearing is educate, educated people's way of looking down at people who are socially less advanced, right? Um, it's almost like a racial thing, a racial right of passage. I'm too good. I don't, I'm very elegant. I don't yeah. have to swear. In, and again, in, but in public, Right, yeah. some people who appear to be uh, not swearing, but when they're with their boys or when they're when they're with, they're you know, swearing. They're swearing, right? Yeah. It, it's about appearances. It's not about actually using proper language. And that goes to the instances. Do you you don't swear in front of your grandma because yeah. you know the situation's different, right? And if you can control it in front of your grandma, you should be able to control it in front of your friends. Right. In in my mind, yeah. I, I I try to limit any kind of foul language right. to like something that may have happened to me by accident, right. hitting my hammer, hitting my thumb with a hammer yeah. type of thing, right? Um, I think that like in music, it's tough because I can't listen to it with my kids. Right. Whereas like an album by an artist named NF, yeah. he's, he's a rapper. He talks about like a lot of emotional things. Right. And he's got a lot of great music, but not one swear word in his music. Right. So I can listen to the whole album yeah. with any age children. So I find also that, like you're going to motivation of swearing. So I find when Taylor Swift, and I could be wrong on this, but when Taylor Swift throws swearing into her records, she knows the audience she's writing to. Yeah. And these are teenage girls or young girls yep. um, who are angry at the world yep. sometimes and just need an outlet. And yep. when you throw the F word in front of them, it doesn't hurt her appeal. Where she is not selling to a quote unquote church audience, whereas even yeah. they, they're the the people that she's going to turn off are going to be, and those are the people that are going to give the record more this um, is, more appeal as far as getting it out there because they'll make posts that say this is so bad. But you're, as soon as you're doing that, you're giving it more credibility. Yeah, you're, you're getting you're, fuel to the fire. You're fuel to the fire, but, right? But here's the thing, Taylor Swift. I liken her to very much like a Harry Potter. Right. Um, Harry Potter started out very childish, yeah. very like kid friendly yeah. and ended very dark right? because the people that watched the kid friendly version grew of it up. grew up. Yeah. Taylor Swift's audience has grown up. Right. Like she's not the wholesome country singer that she grew up to be right. or that she was growing up. Now she is like, she's a jagged, angry you know, hurt sometimes, happy sometimes, yeah. emotional singer. And, that's because a, of, it, and it's a juxtaposition and now she's in a good relationship. It's kind of funny actually, but yeah. And it's the same as like, like, like we talked about Alanis Morissette. Yeah. Alanis Morissette came up as Alanis, yeah. as a pop, yeah. bubblegum pop singer. Yeah. And then became an angrier person. Well, the same thing. When she started singing about her the emotions. Same, the same thing happened to, well, and some of it's uh, contrived too. Right? Like you talk about Katy Perry to... Um, when Hannah Montana became Miley Cyrus, there was a point where there we have to producers will say we have to do something to go from you looking like a bubblegum pop singer yeah. to a more serious, harder, and get that different. So they would do something striking. So we need to give uh, you Katie that. Katy Perry edge. purposely they write a song "I Kissed a Girl" because they want shock value, right? Yeah. Oh, she's bad girl, and then that transition her. Well, and look at Miley Cyrus. Miley transition. Cyrus too, right? Even in, in in her pop culture, you know, now she's a bad girl. She can do some of these songs. But then she went back to country, right. and she started doing that. Yeah. So I think it's more so a commercial appeal. Yeah. And you know what I would love. Yeah. This is just a suggestion yeah. to any uh, big name artists that are listening. Because I know a lot of those big name artists listen to our podcast a lot. I do know. Um, if you come out with an album like this yeah. that has some explicit lyrics, yeah. have Apple, Spotify, and any other streaming feature, have that, or maybe Apple needs to do this. Have a family edited version, like radio edit. Well, that this is what radio does when they take a song. So the radio, radio does right? the radio edits. Yeah. But here's the thing. You don't get radio edits anymore with streaming. Right. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Right? So like if I wanted to listen to this whole album with my kids, yeah. why not release like yeah. Apple? Apple, if you're listening right now. Right. Apple, if you're listening. Apple. Release a radio edit of this song on your streaming platform. And you will get more people streaming it with their families on a regular basis. 
Do you think like the people that know already, the families that know that they have a uh, the the real songs have a negative word in them? Do you think they're going to say, "Oh, well, I still want to listen to this," and I, they're not they're not going to so, support them anyway. So I download. Um, Maybe you will. I download playlists. Yeah. I I actually will look up family friendly playlists. Right. And they'll have pop, rock, all that kind of music in it. Yeah. But it will be with no no swears. Right. There will be no songs with the word with the letter E at the end of them. Yeah. So that I can play them in the car with the kids. Right. And know that I'm gonna get family friendly. Right. Right. But would you support? Let's say you were against uh, how bad. I'm not gonna say bad because that's not. I'm trying to eliminate my opinion from this conversation because I want it to be a conversation. Yeah. Um. The would you support? Let's say, for instance, you did not like this album. Yeah. Because you knew that in this album were many, many F words in some of the lyrics, right? A lot yeah. of the songs. Would you then still want to support that artist by listening to a family friendly version of that song with so, your kids? So this artist, Taylor Swift, I don't look at it being that bad yeah. of music. Yeah. Like in terms of like um, language and the message and all that kind of stuff. Yes, some of the stuff you can read into and a lot of people do and they'll make their own opinions on it. There's other music that has very bad connotations right. to it that I won't listen to with my kids even if it was edited the swears out because there's other right, there's so other storylines to that music that I wouldn't listen to even with though my kids. they don't use bad language the actual content of the song is way worse than the content than the of the actual these language that has the bad language yeah, yeah. quote unquote the, again bad language the the content of the music is worse than the language of the music right, essentially right yeah. so um yeah like there will be some albums that I would support if there was radio edits to right. them right. right like even Noah Khan's album if there was a radio edit version of that album that eliminates the one swear in every song, yeah. then I could listen to it with my family more. Do you right? is is there any place in the arts for swearing? Yes. Okay. Hundred percent. You just think uh, it's used do you think it's just used too much in some instances? It's so it's so it's such a broad brush now. You can look back at like Eddie Murphy's I think it's Eddie Murphy, right? Raw. Yeah, like you can look back at some of their stuff, yeah. and it's like holy smokes! Like that was even old, aggressive. even old movies that we used to love as kids. You're like, you forget. I didn't realize Back to the Future had like ten swears or twenty swears. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? So we we look at it from old people's eyes now. I I say, but at the same time, it's like there is a place for everything, and it's a matter of like whether or not. Like, there's one swear in the entire movie of, I think, the Avengers Endgame. Right. I think there's one swear because they were allowed one right. to keep a PG rating. And they still had it. And it's like, but You why? can have one. My, my 10-year-old kid watches yeah. that whole movie, loves the whole movie. Yeah. And then there's one swear in it. Like, why did it there, have to be in there? So the, there's a movie. Now, that, now Deadpool. Yeah. Deadpool, Lots. Wolverine. Tons of swears yeah. in it, but you know what? That when you go in knowing yeah. that that's the the type of movie it yeah, is. And if you don't want to support it, don't go see it. Yeah. Um, um, but we're going pretty long on the, this topic. Just, just so, so for me, uh, if you ever see the movie Date Night with uh, yeah. Steve Carell and Tina yeah. Fey, yeah. Um, there is one swear. They have one swear, and it's the F word, but it's placed so perfectly. Yeah. That it makes me laugh. <laughs> Every time. Every time. But it's like a comedian where uh, the proper timed it's swear is I can find it funny. However, yep. um, a lot I think a lot of comedians, because their material isn't, and this is what Will Smith says, their material isn't strong enough. They have to depend it on swearing. It doesn't stand alone on its own. To, that's the punchline. The swear is the punchline, not a, a way in which to formulated it's the shock joke, value right yeah and that i cannot stand yeah. right anyway uh leave in the comments whether or not you think that swearing is necessary in comedians or music or anything like that and uh comment on what you think of taylor swift's album because thank you amy has one swear word in it about kim and that's why i think she has it as a miss
No, yes. just kidding. That's not why. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks for uh, checking out our episode today. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and really, please, people, share. Share this because sharing is caring. And we do these interviews. That, they're awesome. Yeah. But it if people don't see them, it becomes that proverbial tree in the forest that, yeah. you know, if you don't hear it fall. If you've watched one of the previous interviews, go back into our library right now yeah. and um, actually... Share it with one of your friends. Yeah, and, and we and we watch them. it for yourself because you learned something. I've watched a couple of these a couple of times, and you learn something the second time around that I didn't catch the first time. Yeah, rewatch, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll catch you again next time. Catch you on the flip side. Cheerio. Cheerio. Let's do the news thing where they start doing like the thing. Okay. Pick my paper. Do like this thing, thing, and then they do the last. <laughs> Thanks for watching the Greg and Tim Show podcast. Don't forget to like. Subscribe and share with all your friends. Sharing is caring.